Welcome back, BC students. This is Mr. Recker from Avon High School. We're going to take a look at our final example from topic 10.5, and we're going to try something a little bit different here. I'm going to try to break out my guitar and show you how the special P series called the Harmonic Series relates to stringed musical instruments. I've never done this before, so we're going to give this a shot. Now, before we uh, move on, we're going to take a look at our example three, rewriting uh, the series uh, and determining the convergence or divergence. So sometimes you might have a series that's not expressed in a very explicit summation form. Maybe they're going to list out the first few terms as you see here. And so if that happens, you just have to take a deep breath and uh, decide upon the fact that you can very likely write this as a summation. And then once you do, you'll be able to better tell if it's a P series or not. So we're going to start out with our summation. You can use some index N or K. I'm going to choose to use N here. Now, the one thing I notice about each of these terms is that we have a fraction. And so I'm going to go ahead and place a fraction in my summation. Now, you might think, well, wait a minute, there's no fraction in front uh, where this first term is. But if you really think about it, you could call that the cubed root of 1. And therefore, <clears throat> excuse me, retain a lot of the same progression and pattern that you see for the rest of the terms. So I think it's a very clear statement then that the denominator is the cubed root of something. Now at this point you can probably proclaim 1, 4, 9, 16, 25 happen to be those values in the denominator, which means those are just values of n that is raised to the second power. Aren't they just perfect squares? You have 1 squared is 1, 2 squared is 2, 3 squared is 9, 4 squared is 16, and so on. So you can start your summation at 1. You know you're going to end at infinity because of the dot, dot, dots. And now you have something that's a little bit easier to work with. Now you might even want to write this a little bit differently in using a fractional exponent. And this cube root of n squared is nothing more than n to the 2 thirds power. And because your p is equal to 2 thirds, which is less than 1, that means you have a series here that will diverge. You cannot add them together. They're going to make too big of a result. Yes, the terms are getting smaller, but they're just not getting smaller fast enough. All right, so if we take a look at our next page here, we, we're going to end with this notion of the harmonic series. And all it is is a very special kind of P series. Note that the harmonic series is just simply a P series where the P is equal to 1. Now, it's still a P series, but sometimes we like to give it this special name. And if we add 1 over 1 plus 1 over 2 plus 1 over 3, well, by the definition of the convergence of a P-series, this should indeed diverge. And that is exactly what theorem 10.5-B says. Nothing has changed. Remember, harmonic, I'm sorry, P-series will only converge if P is strictly greater than 1. So P being equal to 1 puts it into that divergent category. So you're going to see this harmonic series all over the place and we want to be kind of comfortable with it. Now perhaps you may have um, recalled uh, um, from the first video that we did a little bit of a, of a connection to music. We talked about how Pythagoras and some of his students saw how these harmonic series relate to stringed instruments way back in 530 BC which they were some primitive stringed instruments. We have a much more sophisticated ones now. So what I wanted to do here is just spend just a moment here trying to uh, give you guys a bit of insight into how that works with our strings instruments. So let's see if this shows up on camera. I've got my nice little Taylor K28 guitar made from some nice wood off of some tree in Hawaii. Let's see if I can move the camera down here a bit. All right, and then what we've got going on here is a situation where I have six strings, of course, and this guitar is set up um, like most strings instruments where you have what I have uh, on this guitar. It's called a, a nut right up here, 
and a bridge right here. And those are the basically fixed points um, from which the strings will make sound anywhere between these two positions. Now my first string here at the top, if you can hear that, is going to be an E if this is tuned to standard tuning. Well, I know that if I were to fret right here at the 12th fret, right here where my finger is, that would make an octave E. Now, why? Why is this important? What does this have to do with math? I'm not trying to give you a guitar lesson, but what this has to do with math is that I know at this 12th fret, it is exactly one half the length of that string. So by fretting here at this one half position, I get this really perfect tone. And that tone is a higher E. It's just an octave above. Well, if you know a little bit about music, if you play two notes that are octaves of one another, they don't sound bad. Now the problem is, I'm going to have an awfully hard time trying to play those two notes simultaneously on the same string. But I do know that if I find that same note on, say, my A string, which is at the seventh fret, probably sound alike, don't they? All right, now if I hit both of the strings at the same time, this low E and that new higher E, that doesn't sound bad, does it? They're sort of in, sort of like a harmony, let's say, harmonic series. But I don't think if a composer wrote a piece of music that cons entirely consisted of octave notes that they would have a masterpiece on their hands. So it's when you find other places to join two notes together, things get a little bit more interesting. For example, let's go back higher up here, or lower up here on the neck, and let's say if I fret right here at the fifth fret on my E string. Well, I know that that's going to produce an A note. Now, I also know that fretting right about here is about one-fourth of the length of the string. So if I were to play, let's say, this E and an A together, it would sound something like this. Not the greatest sound, but it's something that could work. I wouldn't throw it throughout a song all over the place, but it's not nearly as, as, as dissonant as some other patterns. Now, I have another place right about here, which is pretty cool. How about if I fret here at the seventh fret on my E string? I know that that's the same thing as the second fret on my A string. Try that again. Second fret. If I put those together, that's going to sound pretty good. And that's what we call a fifth in the music world. If you play electric guitar, they call that a power chord. And you can play those power chords all over the place as long as you're two frets difference and one string different on the first few strings of the guitar. I don't want to get too technical. So it sounds something like this all over the guitar. And that's how music and the harmonic series can sort of interweave together. Pretty cool stuff. We'll see you next time.